Welcome to Holy Spirit. Looking around. Thinking back. Where we came from. Where we are tonight then. All I can see is greed. It's all because of greed. Because the sense of people are greedy, selfish, and self centered. They don't care in as much as the cash it keeps flowing in. They don't really care who gets hurt. It doesn't matter to them who is alive, who is dead, and the process of them fulfilling their greedy desires. Mm. This is the government of the greedy and not the needy. Hmm. The calamities of greed. The calamities greed has caused this world cannot be quantified by any figure imaginable. Greed is behind many of the tragic events that have occurred in a troubling world. From Iraq to Somalia, from South Africa to Uganda, from Abuja to the Niger Delta, it is the thinly built and masked with other human bestial tendencies. In whatever and, and whichever human activity and venture that you undertake, the introduction of greed has a virtuous effect of turning friends to enemies, brothers and sisters to friends, parents and children to arch rivals, and citizens of a country to belligerents. Money or property that if shared with transparency we ordinarily go round and make everyone to be happy with his portion will have the opposite effect of rancor, bitterness, enmity, and on occasion the ultimate prize, death, once greed is introduced. Consider a deal that was affectionately done with its inception, continuance, and conclusion, but when it was time for the spoils to be distributed, the greed factor was introduced. Many unresolved deaths in Nigeria are all the outcome of greed. You wonder why the promising man, woman, or friend has met with an untimely death or calamity, but if the truth is told, his or her fate was dictated by greed. Trying to play God when honesty and modesty would have promoted an enduring coexistence. In the absence of greed, this past years would have been glorious years for all Nigerians. But one man would rather hold and arrogate to himself and family members and tribesmen and those yet unborn resources meant for all of us. How can you explain General Muhammad, General Babangida, having a 400 bedroomed edifice in Mena. If it is not in such evil greed, how can you explain the SMR of Billy 
owing almost half of the GRA in Bini City and the whole of a cutter town, if not for greed. How can a Bori possess so much for just a short period of governing a state? I hear some say it is a hard work and development. It should be developed if it was a housing scheme meant for the public. But those lands and developments are now and forever appropriated for the Babangida and Ibinadon dining states. These are just two examples at the tip of the iceberg. Remove the grids of successive governments who have ruled the Niger Delta state in the past 10 years, and there will be no military in the region, in that region today. Those governors are from the diluted blood of the innocents in their hands, blood of militants and of our soldiers, the blood of children and of the aged. Those who kept their insatiable greed at the forefront to cause confusion and make the resolutions of the core problems of Niger Deltans unrealizable. They are devoid of conscience and parade the country with guts and the feelings of immorality. The heroes of our evil's past have all died in pain as the portal operations to eradicate military and the Niger Delta progress and wait for the fallen soldiers and their dependents in particular. The greed of those that are supposed to provide the much needed funds for equipment and allowances to boost the morale have rather intervened to put the officers and men in danger as they have witnessed that have resulted. The attempt by victims of the greed of our officers to highlight and redress their predicaments by demonstrating was meant by court Michelin. These heroes kept the peace in other countries of the world and suffered all sorts of deprivations and dangers. For any how they who is courageous to say that these are associated with the job they choose to do, let me debunk that notion by assaulting and stating that the deaf soldier cases have been in the Republic of Ireland for ages now. These are men and officers who choose to be soldiers. They were sent on peacekeeping missions all over the world, specifically to Lebanon, Chad, Kosovo and Liberia. Many developed hearing problems as a result of the exposure to sounds of artillery guns notwithstanding mufflers provided to ameliorate the effects. Many of the victims have received their compensation in the region of millions of euros from the defense force and the Irish government. If the suing of the defense forces is not an act of insubordination and treason, as we will be made to believe in Nigeria, then tell me what is an act of insubordination? The issue of withholding the allowances of athletes by the officials of the Athletes Federation of Nigeria and other sports federations have been strongly condemned and agitated against in the past. And 
success was made to retrieve their allowances after demonstrating. We were not given life just sentences for rightly fighting for our rights. The greedy officers who withheld the allowances of these officers and men should be at the receiving end of justice, not these heroes. What about the cruelty of the police to their fallen men and women? They were not referring here to the alleged billions of naira of police funds meant for equipment and various projects to upgrade the police force to a matter one. I am referring to the insurance fund from which widows and widowers and indeed dependents of fallen policemen and women who died or got seriously injured or disabled in the line of duty, notably from armed robbers, are to get compensation. The fund has been the subject of an inquiry by the EFCC, while the potential beneficiaries suffer in penuries and dependencies. This problem is associated by the greed of some person or persons. It is very demeaning, nauseating, and provocating fact of our miserable lives in Nigeria that the government of the day is by the greedy and not for the needy, as their insatiable quest for law and acquisition of wealth, wealth has blinded them to all reasons and hence no one can hear from those who should know better an unguarded and reckless remark that two million Niger Delta lives can be sacrificed in order to make one hundred million other Nigerians happy. Can one equate life of a Nigerian with a barrel of oil? Yes, we can, unfortunately, as that is the conclusion one is inclined to draw from the most guarded and erratic utterances and double speak coming from Abuja and the Arawa Consultative Forum. Yeah, yeah, the guy. That's just it. It's still the same. It has not changed. It's government of the greedy by the greedy for the greedy. It has never been a government for the needy. Hmm. They are all greedy lords. All they care about is their own pot of soup. They don't care if the masses cease to exist as long as they agree to satisfy it. They are so, so greedy. Government of the greedy, not for the needy. Mm. I'll just leave us here until I come your way again. Bye.